Good afternoon, and welcome to our church service. This is our third Wednesday, isn't it? And uh, if you're visiting with us, we thank you for allowing this hour to be a blessing in your life, as it will be in ours. Well, do you miss the blue tape? So Holly produced those signs, and uh, they, they will move. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. You can't move them. Raleigh, the head trustee, asked if we'd saved the blue tape so he could reuse it. So that is a cost-effective servant of the Lord right there. So no, we're going we're gonna to do this now for a while. Uh, thank you for coming to church this day, and I have absolutely no announcements. What a blessing. We rise and worship. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. 
The Jewish tradition has begun their services for all these thousands of years with the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That comes down to us from Deuteronomy, as it says, and it is, it is used in every service that the, the Jewish tradition begins. It's a wonderful inheritance, isn't it, that we have from both of those testaments after all of these years into our hands and our hearts and our mouths and our ears. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. I am filled with the throng, and these things possess me. The house of God, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude of the festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation. We pour out our soul to you, O Lord. Before you, we are sinful and fallen, cast down and weeping. But our hope is in you, for you first loved us and gave your Son as sacrifice. We look upon his cross and open our hearts. We confess that we are sinful and unclean. In our thought and word and deed, we transgress your perfect law. Come into our open hearts and cleanse us of all unworthiness. Help us to be doers of the word and not simply hearers. And he commands this response. Upon this, your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
it is Lent, I recognize, and we are to be paying attention to the difference between the Christ who is perfect and we who are not. And that song just reminds me that even in our imperfection and fallenness, the Lord is great. And in our faith, he just holds us up in his hands. Our epistle reading from Galatians. For you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. But I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Our gospel reading this evening from the 12th chapter of the gospel according to Mark. Let's rise to receive it. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Jesus answered, the most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. And as Jesus taught in the temple, he said, how can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, in the Holy Spirit, declared, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? And the great throng heard him gladly. O Lord, have mercy on us. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord, my God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Amen. Please be seated.
Would you join with me in a word of prayer? Come, Lord Jesus, quickly, for many of us are waiting, and not one of us shall be disappointed. Amen. Peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who truly is the Christ. Well, last week we began our Lenten season, our Lenten journey, taking a walk through the 23rd Psalm. It's a beautiful psalm. I think we all know it by heart. And we looked at verses 1 and 2 last week. Verse 1, which begins, The Lord is my shepherd. And I said, that's a relationship. And we talked about that. It goes on to say, I shall not want. And I said, that's supply. Verse 2 is, He makes me lie down in green pastures. And that's rest and he leadeth me beside still waters. That's refreshment. So today we continue as we look at verse 3. He restoreth my soul, it begins. That's forgiveness. You know, without God's forgiveness, without our, our souls being restored, we are spiritually dead. When, you know, when God created man, he, he put him in the Garden of Eden, and he said, you are to take care of it, and you are to, to work the garden. But there's one thing you're not to do. You are forbidden from eating the fruit in the middle of the garden, that tree, the, the tree of, of knowledge and of life. For if you do, you will surely die. And you know what Satan did. That crafty old serpent, he, he conned Eve and, and Adam into eating from that, that tree. And, and sure enough, when they did, God banned them from the garden. And that's when original sin happened. And what happens with original sin? We will surely die. For, for Adam and Eve, it wasn't an immediate physical death, but it was an immediate spiritual death because they had now been separated from that, that loving relationship that they had with God in the garden where God walked with them daily. They are now banished from the garden. You know, for me, spiritual death is a complete separation from God. David felt that, that separation from God, that, that spiritual death in his life. Do you recall when the prophet Nathan rebuked David when he had that affair with Bathsheba? David, David fell face down and he confessed his sins to God. And in Psalm 51, David writes, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Those are our words. You and I were born with original sin. Just like what David said, I was sinful from the moment I was conceived. You and I also were, were sinful at our con conception. But then, what did God give us? What did Jesus give us? He gave us those beautiful words in that water of baptism. And in our baptism, we're restored. We're restored in God's sight. We are no longer separated from God. We no longer have that, that feeling of spiritual death. Paul, in his, in his letter to the church of Rome, writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. 
you know, from that, that moment in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned against God, God put in motion his plan of salvation. That plan of salvation culminated when Jesus, Jesus went to that cross. He hung on that cross for our sins. Our sins are the ones that nailed him to the cross. When, when Jesus hung on that cross, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He wasn't just talking about the people at the foot of the cross. He was saying, no, Father, forgive those Christians in Sun City West, for they know not what they do. And when Jesus looked down and he said, tell us, die, it is finished. At that moment, at that moment, God's plan of salvation was complete. It was complete on that Easter morning when Jesus rose from that grave so that one day, too, we shall rise to be with the Lord. That's, that's restored our soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. That's guidance. Do you recall in the upper room on the night when Jesus was celebrating the Passover with his disciples? He had just predicted that, that Judas would be the one that betray him, that Peter would deny him. And then he goes on to tell his disciples, I am going away. And where I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare that place, I will come back to take you to be with me. Jesus goes on to, to tell them that he has to go away. For his going away gives him the opportunity to send the Holy Spirit to be with us. Jesus says, but when he, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. David in Psalm 25 says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. God shows us his way. God shows us that path to righteousness. God leads us into the truth. And how does he do that? He does that through his word. You may have heard this acronym before, Bible, B-I-B-L-E, that wonderful book that contains God's word. Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Think about it. You need to be in that basic instruction before leaving earth. That's God's word that guides us to eternal life. Last week, Pastor picked a song, a beautiful hymn, Thy Word. Some of the words were, Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side. I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When we follow Yahweh, when we follow his word, that truly is a light of the path to righteousness. The verse goes on, for his name's sake. That's purpose. Have you ever thought about what God's purpose is for your life? I love what the prophet Jeremiah writes. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, prosper you and, and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and, and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. God will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you. When we call upon God in prayer, God promises he will listen. 
I've had people say, well, Pastor, I pray to God all the time, but is he really listening to what I pray for? Because I, I don't seem to get an answer. God is listening to you. God will answer your prayer. I always like to say he answers in one of three ways. He's going to say, yes, that's what I'm going to give you, and that's what I'm going to give you right now. Or he's going to say, no, no, we need to wait a while before I, I give you the answer to that prayer. But then there's the, the final way, and I think the best way. God says, I'm going to answer the prayer, but I've got a better idea. God's idea is always the best idea. You know, God gives us a purpose in our lives. He's given each and every one of us a purpose, a sort of a spiritual gift. Paul says that some were given to be apostles, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, but everyone is given a spiritual gift, a spiritual gift of prayer and of witnessing. It's simple to do. Spend some time each and every day praying for a friend, a relative, a neighbor. Witness to a friend, a relative, or a neighbor about what Jesus did on that cross just for you. That's purpose in your life. Things is a, such a, a simple thing to do. This past week, many of you in this congregation have witnessed to BJ and I in a very special way. Today, my brother was laid to rest. We have received, oh, it's unbelievable the number of cards we received from you. And that was your purpose, to reach out to us, to witness the love of Jesus during this time in our lives. That's purpose. Take time each day to reach out to somebody, pray for them, and tell them what Jesus has done for you. Amen. If you can do it, let's remain standing for a few moments. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh God, you have commanded us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Strengthen us by your own redeeming love that we might reflect your steadfast love to the world through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as pastor says, we ought to spend some time daily in prayer, and sometimes our hearts are simply empty or bereft of prayer, and the Lord has given us this 
for those moments. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's really windy. I hope your tents are well staked down. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace and his grace and a certain knowledge of his love for you this night and forever. Amen. <laughs>